So I'd now like to introduce our speaker. Our speaker is uh, Laura Jeffcoat, and she's going to be talking on the topic of English language training for people who communicate across cultures. Laura uh, Jeffcoat, or Larry Mills, is the community director and in-world manager of languagelab.com. She was involved with its startup, and for six years, she's been involved in every aspect of the community's development. She's involved with the education and training, day-to-day -day operations, strategy, and planning. She works daily to maintain and build a virtual, educational, global community. Laura is a developer of ESL Educational Gaming for different cultures. She's in daily direct contact with students and teachers from all over the world, over 60 countries, and this has provided her with valuable insight on how to make language learning in virtual worlds engaging, user-friendly, and effective. She also has extensive experience managing the delivery of new digital products to a variety of educational and commercial institutions, such as Pearson Education, Brazilian Government, Chevron, Emery Roberts, and many others. So over to you, Lowry or Laura. <laughs> Hello, how is everyone? Hope y'all are all having a good I'm great. afternoon, <laughs> evening. Yes. That things are going very well. Hope you're enjoying the conference. Uh, going to uh, put on here some slides. I'm going to talk to you this morning about uh, some different things that we can do. Um, here I am. You can kind of see me here. Uh, there I am. I'm not necessarily an ESL teacher. <laughs> I am a psychologist. I uh, hold a bachelor's degree, I'm an LPC, LCDC, LMFT, and I was working uh, as a psychologist and then I became very sick and I went online to school and it brought me into Second Life, some of the first things that happened in Second Life, and uh, which brought me to English City where David and Shiv were there and we had some really interesting one of the things they say about me is that if it's broke, I can fix it. And if you have a problem, then I'm the one to contact, which is like, but you can see me, there's my little avatar and my monkey chester, and then there I am above. So I don't, uh, my myself and my avatar, uh, well, I've got more of a slider diet going on with my avatar, which is kind of fun. Uh, one of the things that we do uh, in English City is, I think all of us have been working on there, is to, and, and have found, is the way that this environment really works, you know? I mean, it for me, it it is amazing to see how well um, that that we learn, that, pe that students learn in their education. Um, it is a, it's at a brand new, uh, uh, concept. I mean, it's what six years old, maybe six, seven, and learning to teach in this way are pioneers in education, because we are not teaching as you do in a classroom. Um, we are teaching actually to the brain, and so what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about the two ways that one, the, the way that we're learning and the way that we are teaching. Uh, to the short-term and long-term memory, and then also about to the different cultures, because these are the two main things that I see us being pioneers in. And so as an educator, it is, it is very important that you understand a little bit about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and how it works. This is not just a game kind of thing where you come on and it's really fun, although it is, and it's, 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 it's great fun, but there's also science to it. So I know if you go and you talk to people at your schools, at your universities, I know that this is the, the one thing that people say to you. They say, you're just having fun. You're just having, uh, it's just a game. How can anybody learn in, in this game? How can this be real? How can this be real education? 
but it is real education and it works on science. And although it's fun and although we are car although we are cartoons most of the day or avatars, whichever you prefer to, to call us, we come with science. You know? Um, we come where it works very well. And let me go on to kind of show you a little bit of the science that that we have here. I want to show you, here is our brain. I may need to go to the next one, uh, just so that you can see, and then I will go back. Um, this is an MRI of your brain. Very colorful, isn't it? We have all sorts of energy coming out from our brain. It works really well. Uh, it kind of really works for this environment our brains do. It, it fits in very, very well. So one of the things that we use in our brain and how our brain works is with our memories. And that's how we teach. As teachers, we teach to the memory. If you're sitting in a classroom, you're teaching to the short-term memory. You know, you've got your chalkboard up there, and you're, you're basically doing something. But now, here in our world, we can do much more than take you into a classroom and throw words at you and throw a book in front of you or a computer screen or whatever. We can, well, we can throw up a computer screen in you, but we can take you in, into the world. We can use your senses because when we go into long-term memory, we talk about sense memory. Um, you have an experience, you know, when you, when you, talked to, to some of your early educators. They, talk, they, they worked on experiences. Experiences, instructions, all of these things go into your long-term memory because you have this experience. And now we add our senses in. You've got your sight, your hearing, your smelling, your tasting, your touch. And this is what we have going on. So you've got your short-term memory, your touch, your hearing, your sight. Some of this works. I know that you're always, uh, when, if you're in a classroom, you're always saying, you're hoping that they're looking at you so that they can have that sight. They're looking at the board. They're reading. They're listening to you. And this is the way that you know that uh, they're going to retain some of the information that you are giving to them. In our world, we add so much more. We add you not only have the sight of the object, you have your hearing, you have your tasting, I mean your mouth, it just you get these fa tastes, your touch, it's a fa touch, you know. So we've got a lot of things going on with our senses of the actual event that is going on. So memory can recall things that we sensed. And if you sense it in the classroom, it's going to go one place, it's going to go to your short-term memory. If you sense it to another place, it goes to the long-term memory. Because the memory is going to recall and recreate the event. If you're in a classroom, it recreates the event there. If you're in an ocean and on a ship, it's going to recreate the event there. So the memories of the concepts, the ideas related to the sensed experience, they're all coming through. So what we want to do, and then they form a generalized concept. So we store all of the information in our brain, and we wonder just exactly how that's going to work. And it's going to all happen, not here, but here in the hippocampus. All right, this is where your short-term and long-term memory are decided. Like what gets to stay in your memory and what gets to leave your memory. And this part, we want many things to stay in our memory. We want everything to stay in our memory. And so we are so fortunate because here we can teach to that. Um, we look at uh, when we go for the, the, when we extract the essence of our experience, we form a generalized concept. And the way we do that is because the long-term memory involves three processes. We have encoding, where we break down what we're doing. And this is best done through experiences. Uh, we have storage, 
where it's going into the little storage containers going ah here, and then it will associate it will go just like you do in a filing cabinet it will go ah here's an association we have good feelings going over here bad feelings going over here this going over here and then we have retrieval we're like oh this is something red this is something blue and let's let's pull these kind of things out but we pull them out through our brain you know and it comes comes together um, and what it's called it's a path called the Papras circuit all right so one of the things we do with long-term memory is we add a little emotion and so we want to put the emotion around so this comes in to the long-term memory so we have our um, our memories happening and we have that emotion coming through it so what we try to do is we try to make experiences here 3d virtual experiences experiential training uh, we learn by doing and as you know that's one of the best ways to learn because it all goes into your long-term memory but now we have language that we have to add so we have to create in our mind a need that this language needs to stay in our memory. Short-term memory will take the information and will say, do we need this language or do we not need this language? You know, do we need this word, do we not need this word? If they don't, we throw it out and we don't know it anymore. It takes a long time to retrieve this type of information. Well, with some of the experiences that we put together, our students find ways that they can recreate that language and they can, they can learn to enjoy it and uh, it becomes a part of who they are. And this becomes uh, very all the way to the senses. And this that you see above you, this is a student drama. This is a drama that the students had to put together in English. There were seven different countries involved. Um, and they did it as a play. They came up with their uh, backgrounds, they came up with their outfits, they came up with all of this. They created this experience and they created this experience in English. So they put it together. Now, they worked together and they practiced together and they created something that was unique. So the language that they needed was because they were going to perform. So it became important to them individually. And as the language became important to them, the more they learned. These guys are really, we found that the individuals that work with these drama, dramatic performances, they really do very, very well. Uh, their retention is amazing. So, uh, we have, uh, I'm always very excited about what all that they can do. Um, and put things in in together so they're learning these things uh, sometimes they may have an adventure this is one of the quickest ways we find that individuals who attend a lot of these events these experiential events we have two types of events we have uh, those that are they're all experiential we use guided and situated cognition so that we actually have purpose for what they're doing and this type of an event it's an uh, it's an experience, uh, an expedition, where they are learning things, they're, they're finding things out, they're discovering new things. Each experience is different to each person, so therefore it all goes into their long-term memory. All of the language...